So I've been kind of playing for the other team for a little while here, just taking a break from women and enjoying the company of fellow men. Say hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> anyway, I just kind of wanted to offer a little bit of feedback. For my dear ladies, just in case the sentiment is, is not quite as entirely about how us guys just need to get our shit together and that y'all are just fine and dandy and perfect just as you are. If, if that's not quite the sentiment as much as I might be projecting that it is, then maybe this is for you. I think you're going to have a very difficult time getting masses of men to do things that are hi uh, <laughs> that are systematically punished by a, the bulk of women, and or B, the highest status or most sought after and valued women. And you're going to have an extremely difficult time getting the highest status and most sought after men to stop doing things that are systematically rewarded by the highest status women. And especially that are systematically rewarded not just by the highest status women, but by maybe the vast majority of women. I hear and have heard my whole life from women that y'all want confidence and I've seen that at play in my life plenty <sighs> in my life confidence has come and gone and the women right with it whether I deserved it or not I've also heard my whole life Y'all want vulnerability. And I've seen that too. But it's a very different wave. The desire for vulnerability is extremely specific and very tenuous and very fragile. Itself a very vulnerable desire, very easily supplanted by others. If I may offer my opinion, it's that when the chips are down, one of those two values gets chosen over the other. And I think you know which one. And I think that maybe if you want more male vulnerability, <laughs> you 
you might want to look at how you respond to signs of vulnerability when you're making your initial selections, which you have every right to do any which way you like. You're just gonna get what you pick. Sorry. But it is fairly realistically, biologically, somewhat more on your shoulders. Men get the women they pick. Women get the men they pick. We've both selected each other through evolutionary history, shaped each other's personalities and our very bodies. In fact, I would dare say that men have shaped women's bodies and women have shaped men's personalities. And I think in the coming decades, as feminism's influence either waxes or wanes, the recognition of that choice that women have historically made through their mate selection that has shaped the male personality is going to be a bitter pill to swallow. Because however men really are, whatever our truest selves are, I think a lot of male behavior is performative. Like peacocks. Check me out. And the day that women start valuing authenticity and vulnerability over confidence and entertainment value and success and competence at, like, the things which creates success and confidence and it all spirals, will be the day that you start seeing the most ambitious men acting so authentic and vulnerable all of a sudden. I suppose if there's any one message I might be trying to make here, it's that as a group, whether we live in a patriarchy or not, However true all of the feminist precepts are, I'm pretty sure that collectively you women have a lot more power than you know. And individually too. Oh, and just pro tip, I, I'm not sure if y'all did in the past, I assume so, but just personal experience. Girls just don't have a clue how to make love anymore. Not saying I'm an expert, far from it. I've dreamt about it my whole life. Still don't feel like I've ever really gotten the chance, but just touching. What happened to being comfortable with just touching? I mean, talk about vulnerability. Two stories, two cherry-picked data points, and I'll rest my non-case, because I'm not trying to prove anything. Just suggesting a possibility to be thought about, maybe. I remember in college, after hooking up with, I was in New York City, and I met this really cool older guy, and he took me around New York and told me about every building and its history and took me to the museum and explained all the art to me and it was just wonderful being with someone who knew so much 
And um, so he showed me what it was like to just like be touched all over, have my back licked for like half an hour, you know? And so I think within, I think that same season, I went back to college for a semester and I met a girl and took her home to my bedroom for the night. And, and there in my dorm, I just licked her back for like half an hour. And, she really enjoyed it, and then she, like, ran away at the very first opportunity the next morning and, like, didn't ever want to talk again. I think it was just run-of-the-mill fear of intimacy. Again, data point of one. And then my little second data point is just my, my ex, it was like, either just fuck her or don't. End of story. Anytime I reached out to just start touching, hoping to be touched in return, I mean, I admit, we had a very toxic relationship, and plenty of that was on me. And at the beginning, before it had become so toxic, she was very good at tussling my hair, and being a good mommy, and I got to be a little boy, and that was wonderful, but... <sighs> I don't know if it's just all our imaginations or not, but I'll tell you the perception from being a straight man who's been very interested in very many women and has approached very, very many women and has made a lot of, had a lot of varied success, been rejected a lot, been successful a lot. And man, y'all are into the long con. You do not want a guy to dare think for one second that he can skip any of the steps of the dance. So I don't know. If you want something real. God, I don't know. Don't try it with that fake cocky guy who doesn't show any of his feelings. Try being authentic with that a little more insecure, slightly less attractive guy. See if maybe you can create a safe enough space for him to feel like he's accepted just as he is and share a little bit of himself with you and I think you never know, you might be surprised. He might become that more attractive guy once he starts chilling out and stopping feeling like he's just a failure at the game that we've all got to play. Each side enforcing the other's behavior vicious cycle that I apologize for my entire gender's part in. I am truly so sorry for everything that we do to cajole and trigger and more or less force you to go on being as shallow as y'all are. <sighs> By being just as shallow ourselves. Oh God. And by letting this so-called patriarchy boys club isolate us from each other, rejecting all other male love to the point where we are so lonely and desperate that I don't blame y'all at all for being not even close to willing to be vulnerable in order to elicit some vulnerability. Because the second that 
you're vulnerable around guys. We're just absolutely desperate for contact and touch and love. And we just do not allow it from other men and we will try and take advantage of you. Like I said, I'm truly sorry to say. I think the best advice for either gender is to figure out how to be confidently vulnerable. Take care of yourself well enough that you can actually give yourself a little. Heal others and reap the benefits. And allow them to heal you. Oh. God, so many men are so desperate just to show you a little love. You don't have to settle for one you don't really like all that much, but... Maybe pick one who seems harmless and just... Let him show you.